So we're going to move on to geometric series first. Okay, so that is our formal definition for a geometric series. Let me see if this is still recording. Yep, still recording. We're at 16 minutes. <coughs> and you guys haven't giggled yet. That's a good sign. <laughs> so the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. That's the definition of a geometric series. So if our geometric sequence is uh, our general formula is a r to the power of n minus 1. I see something a little messed up here, so I'm just going to fix this. r cannot be equal to 1 because we have a denominator here. This is my or geometric series formula. a times r to the power of n minus 1 all over a denominator of r minus 1 all over a denominator of r minus 1. And remember from unit 2 and 3, whenever you have anything in the denominator, you have to be able to state a restriction. r cannot be equal to 1, because if r was equal to 1, then my term would, have, uh, would be undefined. So we can never have 1 in the denominator or a common ratio of 1, sorry. And if we had a common ratio of 1, it wouldn't be a geometric series in the first place. Okay. I'll come back to this later, but we need to move on. No, what happened? Okay. So, I gave my, so th I taught this lesson or the exact same lesson at McGivney, and when I actually saw my students every day. And in that class, I told them, okay, everybody in the class is going to represent uh, a day uh, in the month, okay? So I gave one person a penny, and then I gave another person a t two pennies, and we went on just for like a couple of people. And then I said, what if I promised you um, whatever you got today, I'm going to double that amount tomorrow? And then... I'm going to double that amount the day after that and the day after that. But I'm only going to do this for one month. So either I could give you that situation or I could give you $1,000. What would you rather take? And without question, all of the kids said $1,000. I want $1,000. And then we talked about how, what they would do with $1,000 and I distracted them and then we looked at cars and we did all this stuff. And then I said, okay, so you're going to figure out exactly what that amounted to. But they didn't know this, this was a geometric series. They were practicing geometric series. So it took one full day, one full period for them to figure out what the amount would come to. But all the different groups, like three of them had the same answer, one of them had a different answer, they didn't know what was the right answer. So then I said, what if I could just give you a formula and then you didn't have to do all that work in the first place? Which is why I have Alan Iverson here saying, all that work for nothing. That's when Iverson was still playing basketball. <laughs> But, okay, so basically in that situation, my first term in the geometric sequence was one penny. That's what we started off with. I gave my student one penny. And then my common ratio, that would take, that would take my second term divided by my first term, my third term divided by my fourth term, and really I was promising to double the amount of money every day, right? So my common ratio is two. When you think of doubling, you think of the number two, right? That's the common ratio. So knowing that, I promised them not to pay them for a year. I promised to pay them for 30 days if they took that option. They didn't take that option. So n is equal to 30. Gave them this formula. Well, first we wrote down the sequence. One penny, two penny, four pennies. Keep going for 30 days. And then we use this little form, this formula, which has a denominator of r minus 1. Okay? So my common ratio is 2. 2 minus 1 is just 1. So that basically means that the denominator is just 1. So you can kind of ignore the denominator. However, we, when you plug in your common ratio, 2 to the power of 30 minus 1, how do we say that number? What is this big number? How do we say it? Eight. 
Exactly. That's a huge number. You multiply it by one penny, you still get a pretty big number. Ten million seven hundred and thirty seven thousand four hundred and eighteen dollars and twenty three cents. So basically they turned down this deal which would have given them ten dollars ten million dollars in thirty days for one thousand dollars. <laughs> So, geometric series, geometric sequence, it's a really important concept. One of the only concepts, if you want to just take one concept away from this MCR course, it's geometric series. Because when you go into investing, financing, mortgages, all that stuff, they use this formula to calculate that information. Okay? Financial mathematics, which really drive our world, is all based on geometric and arithmetic sequences and series. So really, really important formula. But basically, uh, something you might, this is a perfect description of how, of how something with your first term is very, very small, one penny, the smallest number we can really get to uh, with our money system. And our common ratio is still pretty small, just two. But just in 30 days, you can have $10 million, okay? Um, so a few rules. Oh, no, let's just do this one. So we're going to do the same type of problems, just a little bit quicker. If we need to find the sum of a series only given your first few terms. Remember, this little notation, S to the subscript 10, that just means the series for 10 terms, the first 10 terms. n is equal to 10. In order to calculate a sum, you always need your n value. Therefore, I know from just these first three numbers that my first term is equal to 4, my common ratio. So that is T2 divided by T1. 16 divided by 4. 64 divided by 16 should always give you the common ratio which is equal to 4, and n is equal to 10. Now granted, this is a little bit uh, trickier to calculate because we're dealing with exponents. So remember, you can never just combine or multiply those numbers. Never ever do that. You have to keep your a term on the outside and solve everything inside the brackets first. So I have 4 to the power of 10 minus 1, which give, and uh, yeah, that gives me an answer of 1,048,575. 4 to the power of 10 minus 1. That's your answer. And then you have the 4 on the outside. Your denominator is 4 minus 1. So you can combine your uh, A term and your R minus 1 on the outside. Multiply that by whatever is in the inside of your brackets, and you get that number. You're going to have to practice how to say large numbers for this unit because you will be getting large numbers as your answer. Okay. Um, the other question, similar to what we were doing before, and remember this R minus 1 goes on the outside. I don't know what my computer was doing here. But if you are given just the first couple of terms and you are given the last term, in order to solve this type of problem, you always need to figure out what the number of terms in is. And you have to remember that TN represents the value of your last term. 1,536 is your value of Tn. So we need to find, you don't really have to write this stuff down, you do need to write this slide. We have to figure out how to use my general term formula to solve for n. So instead, we're going to go back to our geometric sequence. Yep, yep, good luck on your game. Thank you. Um, Tn is equal to Ar to the power of n minus 1. And Jonathan, let me just give you this one so I don't forget. There you go. Yeah. Um, yes. Come see me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tn is equal to Ar. Oh, sorry, not tomorrow. If you want to come tomorrow. <laughs> but, 
Um, we're plugging in everything. Remember what I told you in my Unit 4 seminar. The biggest mistake I see is kids multiplying 3 times 2 and making it 6. You have to keep your A and your R separate unless they have the same base. So you have to, have to keep it separate. Even if you're unsure at any point, you're better off keeping it separate. You won't make a mistake if you do that. Now I want to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of the A, and usually you're going to do that. Divide both sides by 3. Then I get an equation 512 is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 1. Because I want to have this common base, I'm going to change both sides to the power, I mean to the base of 2. So in grade 12, you're going to learn how to do this using logarithms. Logarithms is a complicated concept, so we don't spend time doing that in grade 11. What you're going to use is trial and error. 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4. You're going to keep going until you hit whatever 512 is, in this case 2 to the power of 9. On your test, I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to ask you 2 to the power of 62 for your number. You're going to have something under 20, okay? And uh, once you do that, once you have common bases, we can cancel out our bases and only deal with the exponents. That's a very important step. For some reason, students blank out when they get to this step. So remember, once you have a common base, the base disappears. You only deal with your exponents, and n is equal to 10. Therefore, there are 10 terms in this series, 10 different terms in this series.